show would break down your favorite made-for-TV movies one bottle at a time. I'm your host, Patrick Serrano, and today we are talking about Deadly Infidelity, also known as Fatal Memory. Deadly Infidelity stars Kate Watson, Anna Marie Dobbins, Houston Rhines and Jacob Taylor. Now on the show, we either pour it up, which means yes, or put a cork in it, which means no thank you. So what are we gonna do to this movie? What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? Pour it up. Now if you haven't seen the movie and you wanna avoid spoilers, you're gonna wanna go ahead and press pause and come on back. So I'm gonna do a quick little recap starting now. Grace gets in a horrible car accident that puts her in a coma for three months. When she comes to, she realizes that she has lost five years of her memory. While enjoying dinner with her husband, Paul, daughter, Grace, and sister, Lisa, Grace gets a call from an unknown number. It's a man who tells her that he wants to kiss her. Ooh la la. More strange things happen, like someone spray paints her car, breaks into her bedroom, and whispers in Grace's ear. Then a man named Kyle shows up at her restaurant claiming he is having an affair with Grace. The only problem is she can't remember. Her sister Lisa confirms the affair and tells Grace to end it with Kyle or else. I swear to you, I thought he was out of his mind when he came to the cafe and told me about the affair. Look, I had lied for you in the past because you're my sister, but I'm not doing it anymore. Paul is a good guy. He loves you. I love him too, and I would never want to hurt him. Grace doesn't do that and meets with Kyle for more answers. Someone takes photos of them talking and then afterwards, a woman named Stacy sees Kyle and Grace kissing in an alley. She tells Grace that she wishes she had their relationship. While on a walk with her husband, Paul, Grace runs into Stacy again and she knows that Grace is a cheater. The photos from her meeting with Kyle are sent to Paul and he separates from his wife. He knows she's a cheater too. Grace's daughter runs away and ends up at some random house. It is a setup and Grace finds Stacy is there instead. She admits to sending the photos in an act of revenge because Kyle was her husband. Grace fights off Stacy, but when the police are called, she presses charges on Grace for breaking and entering. Later, Grace learns that Stacy isn't even her real name. Her real name is Tina Lewis, and she works at a tattoo parlor. Kyle isn't her wife. Life, he is her sister. Before Grace can talk to Tina, Tina is murdered. Grace looks through old videos and sees Kyle was at a party as Lisa's date. Grace shows Paul the video and the paper trail. Lisa is behind everything and knocks Grace unconscious. As Grace comes to, she hears Paul and Lisa arguing. They have been having an affair the whole time. Grace knees her POS husband in the balls and threatens to tell the press. Lisa pulls out a gun but Grace knocks it out of her hands as the police arrive. The movie ends with Grace meeting a new man. Hopefully, this will be the meet-cute for her rom-com. And that is Deadly Infidelity. So, Deadly Infidelity... Deadly Infidelity is one of those like very lifetimey tropes like a woman gets in a car crash and loses her memory. That is how most people think Lifetime movies, all of them start. Coming into this, I wasn't expecting much. I was like, okay, she's gonna lose her memory and someone's gonna try to like pretend to be her husband or something and take her to a cabin and she's not gonna remember anything and then all her memories come back and it's her ex-boyfriend who still loves her or something, you know? But it, Definitely wasn't that. Uh, we come in right off the bat. Kate Watson is pretty reliable in Lifetime movies. She always comes in, she knows what she's doing, she does her job. Here she got to have a little bit more emotional depth uh, with the daughter and realizing that she had like lost like five years of her memory and struggling with that. That was like hit home right away. An hour in the movie, we get the scene where the wife confronts Grace and she's like, okay, you stole my husband and I'm getting revenge and the police come and all that. And I'm like, wait, there's an hour left in this movie. What's gonna happen? And the twists and turns that come from there were, were really appreciated and unexpected. Anna Marie Dobbins is 
now a lifetime staple for sure. She's done so many movies. This is her first good one. So I'm really glad that she finally got a win coming in as the sister who seems to be, it's very much a Jamie Lynn type of thing here. She's coming in, pretending to be supportive, but behind the scenes, she's a snake. That's messed up. Jamie Lynn, no. Brittany, yay. Yeah, and in general, I'm just happy for Emery Dobbins. Like, good for you. This is what this is what you need to do. You need to like read the script. If it's something a little different, do that. Not too many lifetime hunks in this movie. We have the handsome guy, Paul, but he was not like walking around with his shirt off, showing off his bod. So, you know, we could get more hunks in here for sure. I think that's a stretch goal, but overall job well done, everyone. And now it is time for the Minority Report, the segment where we talk about representation in TV movies and why it matters. So we did have some representation here, of course, the, you know, standard detective and then some auxiliary characters coming in. Let's run through the list. It's pretty extensive on IMDb, so here we go. We had Jesus Ruiz as Detective Wallace, Brandon Santana as an interviewer, Wendy Wang as Melanie, Victor Wang as a young detective, Amanda Fernandez as a police officer. We had POC actors sprinkled in throughout the movie. Were they the principal roles? No, but they were supporting, so I guess we'll give this a B plus C. Plus, <laughs> I don't know, grades, whatever. School's like so far from my mind. And I think that wraps it up for today. If you want more at Lifetime Uncorked, don't forget to check out our podcast, Lifetime Uncorked, or our website, lifetimeuncorked.com. You can follow me at Patrick Miguel or the show at Lifetime Uncorked. And hey, I'm gonna be in a movie, a Lifetime movie coming up called Old Flames Never Die. I play Jordy, and I'm in the beginning of the movie, in the end of the movie, I have five lines, count them five. It was so fun. Uh, check it out. Dream come true. It's so awesome. And I hope you enjoy it. And we'll definitely cover it here. I'm not opposed to pouring it up or putting a cork in my own movie. Um, so yeah.